Valuable assets David Howard has to offer is his ability to communicate so thoroughly with students and pros alike. He has a fantastic eye, and in his classes, the exercises are challenging and yet allow the dancer the opportunity to achieve the desired results. Whether a pro or student, David Howard's classes on video are a valuable audiovisual aid that on my many travels, I try not to be without. Hello, I'm Eliza Minden, the designer of Gaynor Minden's products for dancers. During the breaks in David Howard's class, I'll be offering some advice on point shoes. These pointers are answers to questions dancers ask me most often. After class, I hope you will join me for a look at the history of point shoes and point technique, a rarely studied aspect of ballet's rich and glamorous history. Hello, I'm David Howard, and welcome to the perfect do-along class. It's for everyone, and it's for you. Before we start, we're going to do some pre-warm-up exercises, and they're designed to stretch and elongate the body out, working through the muscles and through the joint areas so that the actual class becomes a little bit more easier and, and interesting for you. I'd like you to meet the dancers now, and we have Yumi and Mark and my associate Peter, and at the piano we have Douglas Corbin. So let's start now. Bending forward, two, and stretching up. Now this is really to lengthen out through the back and bounce, very gently to bounce there. Hands lightly on the bar, up, over, and back through the head. Demi plie once again, it's just like cat rolling through the back and two and one sideways pulling away from the bar very slightly there too good and turning and sideways and stepping forward and one from the beginning again stretching and bouncing and two and one bending forward and gently bouncing good and hands on the bar very lightly and your feet should be just gently turned out not too far over and back one and two and one sideways and stepping forward and turning around two and one stepping forward and one and through the back, now rolling right from the base of the spine to the head, and slowly down, slowly up, and slowly down, and slowly up, and one, up, and down, two, and twist, two, and twist. Two. Now bending, very circularly down, rolling, back and turning, one. This is very good for the waistline here, getting a few extra little inches off the waist, down, two and rolling back and two, half. Now we come onto the feet, really stretching right through the arches, crossing the foot over and gently bouncing there and one changing two that's it really roll right through the feet there good crossing keeping the heel forward try not to sickle the foot one this is very good to stretch out the calf and the achilles here and one bouncing bouncing very gently not too much pressure and one good try and keep the pelvis underneath you so you're stretching right through the back of the leg again and to the other side. This is completely parallel, turned in there. Swing, 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 good, and swing, 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 very loose, nice relaxed neck and shoulders, and swing, 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 good, four, pulling away, and heels off the floor down, roll up, bending back there, good, and two, 
and stretching away and one down rolling over and back one and two and one right up through the back good and two you can put the head right down there and stretch and good I think we're ready to start now, don't you? After that, very good. Welcome back. What is the most common complaint about point shoes? No surprise here, sore toes. But you know, point work does not have to be so very painful. Difficult, yes. Demanding, yes. Fun, yes. But not excruciating. Most point shoe pain is caused by poor fit. And I cannot emphasize strongly enough how crucial it is that your point shoes be fitted properly. A point shoe must never be fitted with room to grow, nor must it be fitted too wide. If the point shoe is too wide, the box cannot provide support. The toe box does not hug the sides of the foot. The foot is free to slide about into the floor where it puts tremendous pressure on the tips of the toes. Sometimes toe pain can be alleviated by simply placing a little cushioning under the tips of the toes. Dancers have historically used lamb's wool or paper towel for this purpose. I prefer to take advantage of the high-tech materials used by other athletes to protect their bodies, such as urethane foam. A couple of micro pads like these can make a huge difference. Be sure that if you use foam cushions of any kind, that the foam be a sturdy one, such as Poron 4000. Cheap foams will bottom out and quickly lose their cushioning qualities. See you at the next break. Now we're going to start in second position and take two full plies. And on the third one, we're going to reverse the arm. Two, three, and four. And take both arms to the fifth, go through the demi plie, and changing into the first. Two demi, one full, and we bend forward, taking the arm up, over and back, and then changing into the fourth. Two demi, one full, a circle around, going towards the bar, two, three, and four, closing into the fifth. Two demi, one full, moving the arm forward, and then reversing the stretch up over and down, and from there, rise up, and turning to the other side, and the same thing on the other side. Okay, start now in second. Let's have the left hand on the bar. We always start with the left hand on the bar. Arms one, forward, and two. Plie, one, and two, three, and four. Again, one, and two, three. Now we're going to reverse the arm and stretch right up, head towards the bar, down through the center, arms to the fifth, and one. On the flat, demi plie, and first. Demi plie one, really shaping the feet, making sure the heels stay down on the floor. And grand plie one, and down, forward. Now we're going to bend forward, stretching right up, and down, and one, up, two. Now curving over and back, and back, changing into the fourth and demi and two and one and two grand plie one and down and forward and stretching and one circling and down and one and stretch now rolling round slowly back and two closing and to the fifth and demi, and two, and down, heels on the floor, and one, and down, and forward, and two, and one, reversing, and two, and one, changing one down, and two, arms sideways to the fifth, and one, turn to the other side, and one, grand plie, and down, two, very good, and one, softly through the elbows, the wrists, the hand faces you right in the center, 
and one. Arm up, head towards the bar as it comes down. Good. Two. And one. Sideways. And dear me, closing first. Dear me, one. Thighs open. Let the energy go down. Coming up through the body. And one. And down. And forward. And two. Bending. And one. Down. And two. And changing. And up. And all the back. And six. Seven. Fourth. Dear me, one. Down. Two. Three. And four. We have to check the fourth here that it's not really too close. About there each time. So it's not too tight and not too big. And one. And down, and stretch, and two. Now slowly back, and six, and closing, and fifth. Dare me one, and two, three, and four, and one, and down. Stretch, two, and one. Now reversing. Now rising, one balance with the arms in the fifth and two. Now turning to the other side around. Lower demi plie and relax. Down and stretch. Okay, good. We'll start now from first and take a slow bat wong tong do, starting from the first. It's always a little bit easier when we start from first and starting from fifth. Tong Du to the front and then closing first. And then Tong Du to the second, closing into the first. And then one to the back, brushing front, brushing back, demi plie first. And to the back and first. Feeling that long line right through the toes first and to the front, one to the back one to the front and then a demi plie into the first we repeat that once again parallel with the feet bending forward and then up over and back back to the demi plie spreading the heel releasing the heel through to the demi point keeping that stretch there slowly rise and balance back again into the first into the demi plie okay or from first position left hand on the bar ready arms one and two and front one and a first second first to the back back and front and back demi plie first and second and two and second two and one and two and lower lower once again and a stretching first one really work the foot along the floor and one and two and coming back and to the first and stretching two and one and two and a front and a back feet parallel and bending forward and one stretch and down one and up and rolling back, back, and back, and two, and demi plie, up through the feet, and rise, and balance, and stretching, and two, arms sideways, lower down, demi plie, and first. Okay, let's turn to the other side there. And. And second, and first, and back, and front, and one, demi plie first, good, one, and first, very long, one, and really shaping the foot, front, and back, a little bit of use of the body, and first, and one, front, easy with the hands, first, 
and two, and one to the back, and two, and one, and two, and one, and first, and out, and first, and one, and one, and one, and two, parallel once again, forward, and stretch, and down, and up. And dear me, plie down, rolling through the feet, and stretch, now balance. Now try not to pull away from the floor. The energy is right down against the floor, lower down, and stretch, and first. Okay, good. Let's start now from fifth position, and we'll leave the arm in second and take on three, on one, and two, and three and four again one and two and three and four again one and two and three and four and second and plie and second and close and one two and three and four again one and two and three and four again one and two and three and four second plie second and then close over towards the bar good side stretch and then forwards and then sideways again keeping the shoulders level as you go over and back and we turn straight through to the second side okay start now from fifth three sets on quad ready arms one leave the arms second and a four and two and three and four and stretch forward and down and to side once again over and two now rolling back one turn to the other side two and one and two and one and two one and two three and four one two and one and down and side and lower stretch and closing four sideways lifting stretching forward rolling down and sideways on and two and over back and two and rise balance with the arms in the fifth and stretching now turning around keeping the balance very high open the arms sideways and one lower demi plie down and stretch two okay good we start the degages from first with the arm into the second second and to the first and to the second and to the first and first 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 arm forward and side and to the second and to the first and to the second and to the first and to the first 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 and down and side we'll take that four times and turn straight through onto the second side okay start now from first position there really feel the heels well on the floor without the weight dropping back spread out through the toes so the foot feels very wide when you stand there almost feel as though you need bigger shoes arms one and side and brushing second and first and second and the first and first 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 and down and side four one and the two and four one and two and the first 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 and down once again and brushing and first and a brushing first four one two four one and a down side and a brushing and first four one and the one and a turn up the side four one and a first four one and a first 
and first, first brush, and down, stretch, and a brushy, and side, and a brushy, side, and one, two, one, and the head and shoulders, four, and two, two and four, four, two, four, and a down, side, four, and a cozy, four, and cozy, and one, Okay, good. We'll start now from fifth and go slowly on choir. One and two and three, four and five, six and seven and eight and one, two and three, four and five, six, seven and eight. Leave the arm, leave the arm, leave the arm, leave the arm, use the arm, plie and side, side, side. And we turn to the second side and go back again onto the first, okay? So we leave the arm and just use it for the three and the three each time. Arms one and two and slowly and out and in, out, in, out, in. Three front, arm one, two, three, side one. Now slowly to the back, one, two, one, two and one, two and one, and one, one and one. And turn around slowly and slowly. Feel the change of the rhythms, two, off we go, and one, two, two, and one, two, four, one, two, and one, two, four, one, and one, two, four, one, two, and one, two, and down, two, and one, turn once again, faster, and out, and in, and out, and in, and out, and in, and out, and in, and one, two, four, one, two, two, four, one, two, out, in, out, in, out, in. Out in one, two, one, two, one, turn round. Good. Out and out and out and out. Four, one, two, one, two, one. And one, two, four, one. Four, one, two, one, two, one, two, and rest. Okay, very good. Very good. Now, don't be frightened of moving quickly, you know. It's um, a little bit of a misconception that if it's fast, it's dangerous. It can be too fast, but it also, too, can be too slow. The most important thing when you're working is that the body establishes a rhythm. And it's the rhythm through the body that produces the slowness of the speed or the quickness of the speed. So we must be careful if we're working slowly that we don't isolate it and we must be careful if we're working quickly that we don't tense. Okay, two things have to be avoided but it's not dangerous to work quickly. In fact, it's fun to work quickly. Now start from fifth and we go coupe, fondue, coupe, close. Coupe, fondue, coupe, close. Coupe, fondue, coupe, close. One part of cheval, one part of cheval. Coupe, fondue, coupe, close. Coupe, fondue, coupe, close. Coupe, fondue, coupe, close. One part of cheval, one part of cheval. We take that with two part of cheval on each side and then go back again onto the first side a little bit faster with the four part of cheval. Okay, let's start now from the fifth position. Ready? Arms one and two and coupe in and out. In, leave the arm and side in, out and in and down to the back. Four. Now your two slow part de cheval, using the knees one and the ankles, so it almost feels like riding a bicycle, one and down. Very softly to the plies, relaxing, don't tense as you lower down. Good, two, and one, and two, and in, and two, and one, part de cheval. And turning up the side, coupe, and in. And down, and one, and two, and one, and down. Left, changing one, <coughs> four. And from the back, relaxing one, and two, and one, relaxing one. Good. Now feel the body, very sensitive through the body, one, and two, side. 
turn a little faster with four. And in, out, up, down. In, out, up, and down. One. Now four, here we go. And one. And one, two. Two, four, one, four, one, four, one, two, four, one. Turn round and one, down. Come on, it's a joyous step, it's a joyous step. One, four, one, two, four, one. Four, one, four, one, and two, out, one, and down, and up, and closing. One, two, four, one, and two, and one, and two. Okay, good. Remember that we always work, must work very hard with what we do, but we must enjoy what we do as well, so it doesn't become like a burden, you know, especially with something like that and Doug playing that wonderful rhythm and movement and you're all standing there like this and you have to let the old bones, not the old bones, the young bones sort of move around a little bit more. There, okay, let's start now from fifth with a demi-plie and open the arm into the sack. And we take a rond de jambe front, and rond de jambe front, and then rond de jambe front, closing fifth. To the passe, and lower, rising up, and plie. Again, front, and front, and front, and front, and then brushing front, and in, arm open, and then close. That's rond de jambe, rond de jambe, rond de jambe, rond de jambe, and then passe, and down, and then rise and plie, the four, arabesque in, open and close, circle, and then reverse the bend at the end. Okay, so now from fifth. Just a plain demi-plie is the preparation. Many ways we can start rond de jambe, but I usually start it from fifth position with a demi-plie. It establishes a sense of balance and alignment through the body there. Demi-plie, arms one, and sideways, and rond de jambe front and front, front, closing in behind, arm down, and passe, arm fifth, arm rising up, and down, rond de jambes, one, and two, and one, and two, now engage the arm again, and brushing front, and passe, and one, arabesque, on de dam, and on, rond de jam, two, three, and now reverse the arm sideways, arm sideways, and two, and rising up, good, and two, changing one, and spreading the foot through the first one, and two, and one, and in, Develope out, closing fifth, and a one, circling down, and two, and a run, and reversing, and one, stretching forward, and down, good, now sliding, and one, down, and two, into the arabesque and one now closing into the fifth and two arm to the fifth and now passe one and balance just a short balance demi plie down relax and stretching and two okay very good let's try on the other side now Start from fifth, arms one, and open sideways two, and a one, rond de jambe, and two, and one, and close, and one, and two, and one, and two, and one, and two. Brushing and in and out. Now, a nice arabesque, a classical arabesque. One and two and one. 
and the arm goes sideways are more on classical lines all the time and one rising lower down and one and two and one and two now brushing and one and in very nice focus the arms don't drop the weight and circling one down and two and round and stretching four and two lower and down and one sliding down as far as you can and uh, up and two now over and one back and back into the arabesque rise and balancing and a one now closing into the fifth good you can use the bar again if you wish and two and a passe and lower on both feet demi plie down one and two and down okay very good Balancing is very sort of uh, similar to like finding the station on the radio. You know, you know when you go from one side of the station to the other side and then suddenly you find the station. The balancing is very similar to that because what you really have to do is find an equilibrium through the body and get the sense of counterbalancing everything from one side to the other so we actually don't tense the body as we balance there. Okay, let's start now from fifth and we take the Batman Frappe with the preparation from second. We take three singles, one and two, three and four, five and six and double and fold you and one and two and three and four and five and six and second and then fold you. We turn through to the second side, go back again onto the first side on the demi point and just come down for that last one into the second on the fold you. Okay, start now from fifth. Ready? Arms one, and side, and front, one, and two, and side, 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 one, and two, and two, double one, and one, one, and turning round, front, front, to front, and one. Turning once again, and one, and two, and one, and two, four, one, and all one, two, and all one, and all one, and the turn, other side, four, one, and two, and one, and one, and two, and one, at least one, four, one, and all one, and all one. And on, and two. Now close fifth and balance with the arms in the fifth. Good. Now remember just to find that sense of equilibrium there. And turning round to the other side. And two. And open the arms sideways. And now lift lower and down and stretch. Let's start the fondue from fifth position and open the arm into the second. We take a grand plie on one, two, three, and four. Rising up on five and plie, and then rise and then opening the arm. Fondue and front and fondue and side and fondue into the arabesque, close through the coupe and then closing into the fifth. A grand plie, two, three, and four, rising up and then lowering down. Just one arm there, rise up and stay there, fold you and arabesque, fold you and side and fold you and front and just shape through the coupe and closing fifth with circle, reverse the bend and just balance with the arms in the fifth. Okay, let's start now from fifth. Arms forward one and two and grand plie one and two and forward two and one rise just one arm demi plie down rise and one arm 
fifth. Now the arm is coming forward, down. Side, the arm is coming down and under. Arabesque, and shape into the coupe. Good, and one, and down, and forward, side. And reversing, and changing, forward. Good, now shaping it, heel in, and out, and one, two, and one, and two, and one, and circling the bend, one down, and two, around, very smoothly, really get the maximum range of movement as far as you can, without bending the knees. Now just rising, let the arms come right down, and two, taking the arm under and up, and two, now balance there, one, and two, sideways, lower down, breathe. Okay, good, let's turn on to the other side. We just have to watch each time when we go through the fondue, that the knees are working equally that we're not higher on this leg and more released with this one. They're equally down and equally stretched. And it's a feeling of pushing away from the floor, so the energy goes down against the floor as the body weight comes up. One. So we use our calf as what we call a depressing agent from the floor. Not depressing mentally, but depressing physically. Okay, ready? Arms one. And two. And a one. And down and forward and side and rising and rolling and rising changing now it's right here especially for the boys because you need more power more power boys in those legs and warm and stretching out elongate the line one changing and arm worn down it's almost like singing through the body and rising and rolling and rising changing down and out changing down and out so it's very rhythmical one two and one and now go now the work's over, just release the body, breathe away, two, and one, back, two, changing down, and now rising, one, just balancing there, two, good. Now try to use the minimum amount of energy there when you balance, lower, changing down, and through the fifth. Okay, very good now. We join the rond de jambe and the petit battement exercise together and we take a single rond de jambe on one and closing two and a single three and closing four and to the back, front, back, front, back, front, back, front, back and then closing fifth. A single and then close and a single and then close to the front, back, front, back, front, back, front, back, front, closing fifth, and we turn to the second side, back onto the first side with double rond de jambe. The pity back one position I want you to use is a fully stretched foot, so it's not wrapped around the supporting leg like a normal coup de pied, but we're using really a coupe action there at the leg each time. And it should feel like little ballonets, little ballonets coming in rather than a sort of a scratching feeling there. Okay, ready? Off we go now. Single close, single close, back from, back from, back from. Ready? Arms one, and two, and four, and two, three. Turn around, single close, single close, pull up. And single close, single close, pull up. Double round de jambe, and one is the timing, and one. 
and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, and one, two, and one. Good. And one, and one. The rhythm. Pull up. And one. Pull up. And one, two, and one, one, one. Close down. Okay, very good. Now we start the grand battement from fifth position and we take a grand battement front and close, side and close to the back, front, back, close, back, close, side, close, front, change, change, close. So we have a battement cloche in the middle there. The arm goes fifth, second, arabesque, changing, changing, closing. So the arm is changing as well as the leg, okay? And at the end, we just rise up and balance and turn back onto the first side. Ready? Arms one and two, three, four, four, one, four, one, and one, and one, four, one, and one. Turn around, four, one, four, one, four, one, four, one. Let's do that once again and turn And balancing two and one and two. Now turning around to the other side, one and stretching arm sideways, lower and down and two. Many dancers have a special need in fitting their point shoes because their feet change width significantly once they rise on point. When this type of foot is spread out, for example in landing from a jump, it may be fairly wide. But once on point, the bones of the foot move closer together, making the foot quite narrow. Often a dancer feels pain on point because her now narrower foot is sliding down into the box. The box that is wide enough to accommodate her foot in jumping is too wide for her on point. This problem is solved with a dynamic box liner. It's called dynamic because it changes as the foot changes. When the foot spreads out, the liner compresses to become very small. But as the foot narrows, it instantly returns to its original thickness so it can hug the forefoot and prevent painful sliding. We recommend a liner that goes around the sides and the top of the foot only extra material underneath the foot might interfere with feel for the floor. This is an extremely effective means of eliminating toe pain and reducing irritation to the knuckles of the toes. It can also improve the appearance of the shoe around the forefoot. One more quick tip. Do the heels of your point shoes slide off? Try heel grippers like these. It's best to use them in sections just off to the side at the back of the shoe so you don't make your shoes feel shorter. They keep your shoes on and also minimize wrinkles in the satin. Okay, let's come into the center and learn the adagio all together. We start opening the leg front and a rond de jambe coming on fast and then one on layer, not too high, and then lower down into the fourth. Brush the leg front and brush it back and front and back and then closing into the plie. Same thing to the other side. Croise and en face, one en l'air, and then lower down, and brush in front and back, and front and back, and then closing fifth. Coming en face, fondu, and développé second, passe and close, fondu, and second, arms to the fifth. Turn around squarely through into the first arabesque, promenade around, two, three, and four, fond you, and a part of beret through the demi-plie, and then stretch, and then we repeat it through onto the second side. Okay, let's have two groups now. Let's have the ladies first, please. Ready? Just go a little bit closer there, I know. Arms one, and two, 
and Ronde de Chambre Croise, and you, and one, and two, and brushing, and changing, and warm, and two, good warm, and two, and warm, and two, and warm. It's very good for the change of weight there on fast fondue. Out and passe, lifting the foot. Good. And on both arms. Fifth. And on turning around to the arabesque. Now really square there. One. And two. And three. Stay there. Fondue. Now part of with the arms down. Part of with the arms down. And on other side, and on front, front, on and two, and on and to find the balance each time. Very good, and on, very nice. So we phrase that one and two and round and change. And coming on fast, spreading the foot against the floor. And passe, and down, and war. And sideways, arms fifth, turn arabesque. Promenade one, around and two. Theory, and four, and war, and two. Now rise and balance with the arms in the fifth. Rise up. Now very soft, ladies, relax into it. Arms sideways, lower down, demi plie, stretch, and two. Okay, very good. Let's have the gentleman now. Gentleman, a slightly different quality there. So the ladies, a little bit stronger, a little bit clearer with the lines. Ready? Arms forward, one and two and front and front arms down and two and brushing and changing one and closing very good one and one and one and two and one and one and one. Now coming on fast. Thong do you. And one. Arm, one arm. Passe. And down. And thong do you. Both arms fifth now. Now turning slowly around. Really see me there. One. Good. And round. And two. Now a strong thong do you. Don't soften the arms. Strong thong do you. Hard of red, arms down, and to other side. Good, now use the supporting side. This is all to tune into the balance, to feel that working leg. And two, and one, and one, and one, and one, and changing, and down. Now the left arm, two, and one, passe in, and changing, and up, and one, turning round, good, and one, round, theory, plie, and one, part of right under, now rise and bow. And to really use the floor, so you feel the power of the legs against the floor. Arms sideways, lower, change down to the fifth. 
Okay, good. Let's come into the center now and learn the center practice. We start from fifth, quasi. Tong du on one, tong du on two, tong du on three, tong du on four. Change into the efface, one, two, three, releve, one, pas de bourre. Tong du on one, tong du on two, and three, and to the plie, and then one, two, three, and one, pas de bourre. Tong du in, and in, and in, and in, and uh, in, in through the fifth on one part of Bore, toned you in and in. Okay, let's have the ladies first. <clears throat> Ready? Arms one and two, three and four. Pull up. On a face. Relevate and up, up, down. Pull up. Really feel the feet each time, hold on. And hold on, two, one, and hold on, and down. Okay, let's have the gentleman, okay, and the gentleman. Same thing, really feel that fifth each time so you don't skip through the positions there. Very important that we establish the positions. Again, it feels a little bit quick, but it really isn't. It's just that we're a little bit slow. Arms one and two, three and four. Pull on. Pull on. Pull on. Pull on. Pull on. Pull on. And one, two. Very good. Let's come back now and learn a um, center practice, a moving one this time. We'll start from fifth and take a coupe and a releve, very similar to the adagio that we've just done. Not too high with the leg, releve up and then lower back into the four. A balance, say forward, and a balance, say back. And a pique onto the leg, and a pique onto the leg, a tombe, and a part of that goes to the coupe. A rond de jambe around, and then lower back, very much down and under, down and under, and under and back, and a pique, and a pique, change, tombe, part de bray under. Ladies, when we do the pique, after we've done the rond de jambe, Balance it forward and back. We're going out with the arms and out with the arms and one part de bourree. Gentlemen, we just leave the arms there, okay? Ladies, we get a little bit more de decorative with the arms. Okay. Let's start now from fifth and off we go. Arms one and two, three and four, up and down. Very nice. Gentlemen, same thing. Now make the releve a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger on the balance, say, and then just hold the arms in the position there so you're very conscious of the line on the PKs there. Ready? Arms one, two, three, four, and one, two, four. Once again, up, down, hold on, hold on, two, four, one, two, three, coupe, round the bed, hold on, hold on, and go one, two, three, one. Is there any way to make feet stronger? Is there hope for ankles that don't want to stretch? Absolutely. 
A great item to have in your dance bag is a stretch band like this. Physical therapists have long used them to rehabilitate injured joints, but they are also excellent strengtheners and stretching aids. There are many wonderful exercises that can be done with these bands. Here's a simple but very effective one for the feet. Lie on your back, raise one leg up to 90 degrees so it is perpendicular to the floor. Grasp the ends of the band in each hand, wrap the center of the band under the ball of the raised foot. Point and flex the ankle, keeping the second toe, center of the ankle, knee and hip aligned. Right, let's go into the pirouette section now. And we take a chasse, pas de bruit, fourth, a pirouette, lower down, and a told you, and fourth, an en dedans, pirouette, and chasse, pas de bourrée. Pirouette, lower down, change onto the back leg, and down, and pirouette, and down. I think we have a nice tango for this, Doug. And two, and a pirouette, and down. And a changing the arm, and a spotting to the front. And a one, pas de bourre, pirouette, lower down. Same arm as the leg, and spotting to the front. So the arm from here, as we step back, it really does a rond de jambe. It goes right out, down, under and forward, coming right into the balance and lower down into the fifth there, okay? I think we'll just stick to the double pirouettes each time. Only two. Ready? Arms one and two. Three. And one. One. And one. One. Good. Gentlemen, now. Ready. Arms one. Now let's start back here and we'll do another pirouette and we'll take um, a waltz forward and back and a pique turn, a pique turn, a tombe, pas de bourre, under, pirouette, lower down. Waltz forward, back, a pique turn, on the dong, and a tombe, pas de bourre, under, to the fourth, on the yaw and down. Let both arms go down and out so they're very long and then down and then under and in. Using the head, make sure that you really come a around in that line. Don't let the head go this way so it drops onto one side. Very up through the top of the head. Two PK turns, tombe, part of right under, pirouette, and down. And one, and two, and three, and four, tombe, part of right under, pirouette, on the yaw, and then lower down, okay? Right, let's start with the ladies now, and then we'll go straight through with the gentlemen there. Okay, spread out now. That's it. Arms one, and two. Now, very soft ladies, and balance safe. Tombe one, down, and one, other side. One, so one, and all one, and all one. Now, good, strong releves. Pull one. Good. Pull one. Gentlemen, ready. 
Stick to the double turns, boys, but really place them well. Four and double and one and one. Good. Four, two, four, tombe one and down and one and down. Okay. Let's come into the center now and get into the allegro sections, okay? We'll start from fifth position with the right foot in front and take change on one and again two, and again three, and again on four. A glissade, assemblé, and a pas de char, and a pas de char. Change on one, two, three, four. Glissade, assemblé, and pas de char, and pas de char. Change one, change two, change three, change four. Glissade, two, picking the leg right up and over, right up and over, change on one and two and three and four, glissade, assemblé, and pas de char, and pas de char. Let's have two groups now, the ladies first. Ready? Right foot in front now. Arms one, two, three, change, one, glissade, two, pas de char. Okay, good. Gentlemen, the same thing. Just a little slower. A little bit higher on the pas de chars. Ready? Arms one, three, four, and one. And two, please start. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, very good. Let's learn the second little combination, which is rather short. Glissade, assemblé, see sewn under with the back leg, see sewn over with the back leg. Glissade, assemblé, see sewn under with the back leg, see sewn over with the back leg. Glissade, assemblé, see sewn, see sewn, glissade, assemblé. See sewn, see sewn. We really have to come down and feel the line as we extend there. The arms are going to come down. We're going to lift up, turn around the spine and lower down. Lift up, turn around the spine and lower down. And one, and two, changing, and then changing there. Okay, let's have the ladies first, and then the gentlemen second. Glissade assemblé. Left foot in front, and the two seat zones you're going towards the back leg, okay? Left foot in front. Ready? Arms one, and two, three, four, and one. One. Once again, ladies. Okay, very nice. Gentlemen, the same amount of time there. So we take it through the same phrase. Just a little slower, a little bit more of a rebound, but keep in the rhythm all the time so we don't tense at the top of the movement there. Ready? Arms one, two, three. Very good, now. Let's start from fifth with the right foot in front, and we'll take an entrechat capture 
and an Antichar catcher, a C sewn over with the back leg this time, and a C sewn over with the back leg, a chape second, pas de bore under, a jete derriere, an assemblée over. To the front, to the front, back leg comes to the front, back leg comes to the front. A chape second, pas de bore under, link the jete to the assemblé. Let's do that once again now. One of the important things when you're learning the steps is to try and feel as much as possible the reaction of the body weight. So the secret really isn't what the arms and legs are doing. The secret is where the body weight is that produces the step. So that's what we have to think about. You know, it's like it's very difficult to walk if we don't change our weight. We can struggle forward with the leg as much as we like, but we actually can't manage anything. So, what do we have here? We're here and we're here. We push up and we change to there. We push up, we change to there, we join that to that. This is a linking step that goes to one leg. Now, we can't stay on one leg very long. We always have to get from that one leg to two legs as fast as we can. To the front, to the front, changing in and changing in, rebounding here and connecting to there, connecting there, connecting into the fifth. So the whole thing really is about connecting the movements together. Okay, ladies, let's tackle the cause. And two, three, and one. Échappé. Jeté assemblé. Second group now. Four. Échappé. Jeté assemblé. Boys. Allons. Jeté. Success, success, success there. Very good. Okay. Now, let's do the next combination. And the next combination will be something for the ladies and something separate for the gentlemen. We'll take a faille and a soda char and a balancé back and a ton levé. A faille, a soda char, a balancé back, a ton levé. A faille, soda char, Balancé back, ton levé, faillé, saut de char, balancé back, and ton levé. So really the step finishes in the air. Of course we have to come down to start again, but we finish right at the top and then we just run off over there. Okay, gentlemen, we're going to take a ton levé arabesque, a ton levé to the back of the knee, and a saut de basque. Now saut de basque is not a difficult movement to do. It's all it is, is a jeté en tournant. It's a plain jeté devant, en tournant, and then a ton levé into that line. It's got a lot of rebound in it. A ton levé, arabesque, a ton levé to the back of the knee, and a saut de basque, and a ton levé. So it's got instant lift. Up and a, up and a soda bus ton lefe. Up and a, up and a soda bus ton lefe. Up and up. Okay? Single soda bus there. And as I said, all it is really is a brush turning around with the leg coming through to the front. So it's a jeté en turn on devant, really. That's all the step is. Ladies first now. I think let's go two at a time. Okay, do it once each side and then have the second two and then boys into two groups as well. Two and then the three. Ready? Off we go. Arms one, two, three, four and a young.
very good. Let's come back into the centre now. We'll start from fifth and take a grand plié on one, two, three and four. Using the left leg, a rond de jambe, stepping over, changing through and closing fifth. A grand plié, two, three and four. A rond de jambe, changing over, closing into the fifth. we we'll take 16 little chants, one to finish, rise up and balance and then opening the arms to the side. So it's a grand plié, two, three, and four, very stretchy and very long, and opening out and then closing into the fifth, opening the leg into the second. Okay, just let's spread out now. Very good. Yumi, come forward there. That's right. Ready, arms one, and second, and grand plié, one, and two, three, now using the left leg, rond de jambe, changing and extending, closing and on, grand plié, and down, and on, other side, rond de jambe, on, and changing, on, closing fifth, and sautés, on, and two, and three. I'd like to thank these lovely dancers. Very, very nice. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank Mr. Douglas Corbin at the piano for a wonderful show. And we hope that you'll join us again in the future for our next class. Thank you very much. Thank you. While you stretch out after class, let's have a look at the history of point shoes and point technique. When we think of ballet tradition, we may think of beauty, discipline, grace, gallantry, first position. All these traditions go back to ballet's origins in the 16th century. Toe dancing, however, has become a ballet tradition much more recently, and it has been evolving constantly since its beginnings in the early 1800s. Point shoes have likewise changed enormously from the soft satin slippers on which Marie Taglioni rose up to full point for a brief thrilling moment in 1832, to the hard reinforced blocked shoes that enable today's dancers to dazzle audiences with multiple pirouettes and sustained balances. Changes in point shoe construction changed point technique and vice versa, but point shoes themselves are seldom recognized for their part in the history of ballet. In 1580, the Italian princess, Catherine de' Medici, married the French king, Henry II, and introduced ballet de cour, or court ballet, to the court of France. From these early productions, featuring masked and costumed courtiers, a codified vocabulary of steps eventually emerged, the same steps and the same five basic positions that we do every day in class. Dancing at court flourished and developed into lavish spectacles and extravaganzas, especially in the 1600s under King Louis XIV. He loved dancing and starring in court productions and founded the Académie Royale de Danse, which would later become the Paris Opera Ballet. Ballet was, however, a man's activity. The ballerina as we know her had not yet come into existence. Women really couldn't participate in the way men could, in large part because they were severely limited by their clothes and shoes. Women had to wear huge wigs and enormous headdresses, full heavy skirts up to six feet in diameter, shoes with heels, and tight corsets that restricted breathing and bending. Men, on the other hand, wore tights and shorter tunics, providing freedom of movement, enabling them to jump and beat. They got to do all the good steps. By the 18th century, ballet dancing had moved out of the ballrooms of royal palaces and onto the proscenium stage. Women had begun to overcome society's disapproval of female performers and also to rebel against their restrictive costumes. Marie Salet literally let her hair down and donned looser clothes for her ballet d'action, and her rival, Marie Anne Capie de Camargo, took the heels from her shoes and shortened her skirts, 
quite scandalous at the time, the better to perform and to be seen performing those flashy new steps that had heretofore been done exclusively by men, entrechicot and cabriole. By 1800, the newly prominent ballerina, equipped with a greater vocabulary of steps, wearing a shortened skirt and flat slippers, elegantly turns, jumps, beats, and glides, but the great change has not yet taken place. Toe dancing revolutionized ballet. It gave the ballerina a new look and a new line, changing her alignment and her technique. It allowed the ballerina to create new images and visual metaphors that in turn allowed the ballet to tell fantastic new stories. Point dancing introduced a highly dramatic and theatrical new effect to ballet productions. Ballet was no longer just spectacle. It was now drama, now truly theater. No one knows exactly who was the first to rise on point or exactly when she did it. We do know that the first full-length ballet on point was La Silphide in 1832. The dancer was Marie Taglioni. Marie Taglioni often gets the credit and the blame for inventing point dancing. Almost certainly there were dancers before Taglioni who rose onto the tips of their toes. But whoever was first, it was Taglioni who pioneered and developed the technique she transformed toe dancing. What had been merely a stunt and a kind of circus trick became a genuine means of artistic expression. Her grace, lightness, elevation, and style earned her an adoring audience and a brilliant career. In Russia, her fans loved her so much that they supposedly cooked her slippers and ate them with a sauce. But why did anyone rise on point in the first place? Of course, toe dancing was impressive and virtuosic, but more importantly, it served the drama of the ballets. The 1830s were the heart of the Romantic Age. The artists and poets of the Romantic Age, such as Keats, Byron, Shelley, and Chopin, were passionate about beauty, nature, the supernatural, the power of love, and passion itself. The great ballets of the time almost always tell the story of a regular human man who has an encounter, a passionate but tragic encounter, with the supernatural. The supernatural takes the form of an idealized woman, a symbol of beauty, nature, love, and immortality. The 19th century ballets are full of such otherworldly characters. The sylph in La Sylphide, the willies in Giselle, the water nymph Ondine, the fairy in La Paris, the swan maidens in Swan Lake, more fairies in Sleeping Beauty, the shades in La Bayadere, Swanhilda in Coppelia is just about the only healthy flesh and blood female around. However, spirit creatures and the unattainable ideals they represent cannot be possessed, so these love affairs usually end very badly. Giselle is an exception in which love triumphs over everything, even death, and it remains one of the most popular and enduring ballets of all time. With her new ability to dance on point, the ballerina was able to convincingly portray these sprites, nymphs, ghosts, fairies, etc. She could appear to hover, float, skim the floor. The ballerina created an illusion of weightlessness. She was so dainty she could defy gravity to balance on a flower. This is but one reason that noisy point shoes are an aesthetic disaster. Rising on point, she achieved an ethereal lightness and a shimmering supernatural grace. The effect was enhanced by the lovely but eerie illumination created by new stage lighting technology, gaslight. But such lights were extremely dangerous. Teenage ballerina Emma Levery was mortally burned during a rehearsal. New costumes helped too. In her long white romantic tutu, starkly simple compared with the ornate costumes of the previous century, the ballerina became an icon of femininity, purity, and virtue. Her skirts would billow and float, emphasizing her lightness. What exactly did Taglioni and her contemporaries, such as Fanny Elsler, Fanny Cerrito, Lucille Gran, and Carlotta Grisi do technically? What was the height of ballet virtuosity in the mid-19th century? Not much by our standards today. As far as point work went, it included, among other steps, the single pirouette and the pique. The dancer's alignment was also different. She was less vertical, less straight up and down. Her hips were released back and her upper body tilted slightly forward. She was not over her feet as are today's dancers. How could she be in such flimsy shoes? The shoes that enable dancers to linger on point for more than just a moment had not yet been developed. 
but even a little bit of point work was sufficient to affect the entire future of ballet. The original point shoes were actually tight-fitting soft satin slippers, much like today's technique shoes. They had a thin leather sole and some darning on the sides and under, not on the tip. That's all. It must have been a lot like standing barefoot. The point shoe as we know it today, with a stiff sole and a reinforced toe box, did not evolve until decades later. As a result, promenades, sustained balances, hops on point, fouettes, and other multiple pirouettes did not enter the ballerina's vocabulary until the very end of the 19th century. By the late 1800s, two distinct and rival methods of training dancers had developed in Europe. The French school emphasized refinement and restraint. The Italian school, on the other hand, produced more muscular dancers who strove for virtuosity and pushed the boundaries of technique. The Italian dancers had developed an astonishing new technical feat, multiple pirouettes on full point. They had a secret weapon for turning without becoming dizzy, which they guarded like a trade secret, spotting. They had another tool as well, better shoes. By reinforcing the toe area of their slippers to make a stiff block or box, the Italians got enough support to turn those fouettes and to stay up on point for much more than one ethereal moment. When Italian ballerina Pierina Lanani turned 32 fouettes on full point for the first time in St. Petersburg, she caused an enormous sensation, influencing the great choreographer Petipa and the whole next century of ballet. All the French-trained Russian ballerinas scrambled to catch up technically, but found they could not manage in their soft shoes. So they had their shoemakers create harder shoes for them, thus beginning the cycle of more shoe allows more point work, more point work requires more shoe. The Italians contributed to another change, the shorter dancing skirt that evolved into the tutu. Virginia Zucchi, a contemporary of Lenani's, was a great beauty, and she knew it. Zucchi refused to dance in a costume that, in her words, was fit for her grandmother. So she flouted the Imperial Theater's strict regulations, and the ballet world enjoyed another delightful scandal due to a ballerina's hemline. Improvements in point shoes empowered dancers to do more on point, again expanding the ballerina's vocabulary and the art as a whole. Petipa, as a choreographer, put this new equipment to great use. He made multiple pirouettes on point, sustained balances and promenades, hops on point, all mandatory for the ballerina. His hallmark grandpa requires the ballerina to perform all of the above, if not more. But Petipa's point work still served a dramatic purpose in characterizing the supernatural idealized woman. Odile's 32 fouettes in Swan Lake are meant to hypnotize Siegfried. The fairies in Sleeping Beauty use their points to flit about magically. Princess Aurora's awesome balances in the same ballet show us what a poised and elegant princess she is when courted by her suitors. Because she could do more on point, the ballerina was now required to do more on point. And as choreography asked more and more of the ballerina, she had to ask more and more of her shoes. The shanks became even harder, the boxes more and more reinforced, the platform bigger and bigger. It is said that Anna Pavlova, who was among the greatest of the Russian ballerinas at the turn of the century, and who still danced in relatively soft shoes, had photographs of herself retouched to remove some of the tip. Although she was actually dancing on the newer, broader platform and had added a leather insole, she wished to preserve that 19th century romantic ideal of balancing on the smallest, pointiest little tip. Now, at the end of the 20th century, ballerinas must be extremely versatile. They must master not only the grueling point work of the petty pie grandpa, but also the wide range of choreographic challenges that have accumulated since then. For ballerinas today, point work is completely integrated with ballet technique. Even jazz and modern choreographers demand that women wear point shoes, although the steps are from a different idiom. Often the shoes needed to perform such choreography must be extremely supple and responsive and simultaneously supportive and durable. Unfortunately, female ballet dancers, those who do point work, suffer particular injuries that men and other non-point dancers avoid. Most point shoes are still made from the same materials that were used in Pavlova's day. 
Although point shoes have evolved over the 20th century in that they have become harder and boxier, the basic construction materials of most shoes are still leather, burlap, paper, glue, and nails. Only recently have durable elastomeric materials been used for shanks and boxes, and only since 1993 in Gaynor Mindens have shock and sound absorbing materials been built into point shoes. Medical science is now beginning to examine the forces at work on ballerina's joints in order to prevent injury. More and more doctors and physical therapists specialize in dance medicine. Improvements in the footwear improve the art. The history of point shows us how, more than once, a great ballerina would improve her shoes in order to achieve some new and remarkable virtuosic feat. For example, Camargo removed the heels, Taglioni added darning, Lenani had a stiffer box, Pavlova inserted a leather shank. This would raise the level of technique, and in order to meet the new standard, other dancers would have to modify their own shoes. With such improved shoes, subsequent generations would, in turn, achieve even greater feats. Point shoes and point technique have evolved together over the past century and a half, and progress continues today.